Yo, what is up everybody? So today I got a fun one, abstract images generated with AI. So we've all seen these type of images that are behind me that are utilized on websites. So not only am I gonna show you how to generate these using Midjourney, I'm also gonna show you some Photoshop techniques that can really help you fine tune them. And then also I'm gonna show you in Figma how to integrate these and really quickly create a UI around them. And along with some tips and techniques and considerations. So as always, make sure to subscribe. Let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. Okay, so the first stop here, my little designer and code minions is Midjourney, and that's in Discord. So um, I'm gonna assume you already know about Midjourney. It's a AI image generation prompt based service and you can enter prompts to come up with all sorts of cool stuff. So here's a few prompts that I made. I'm not, I'm not gonna spend much time on this because you can easily just customize these prompts to make something even more unique um, than this. Um, but you can see these first four examples, I really like this one. Um, it's something that we could use like in a hero section, but we need to be able to modify this because it's kind of thick in relation to the aspect ratio. You can kind of imagine this little square here being a monitor, uh, maybe like a hero section or something like that. Um, it's just a little bit too large. So we're gonna take this one into Photoshop and I'll show you how to morph it and distort it and even isolate it from the background so we could do some really cool stuff. So we'll do this one second. Um, here's another example, you know, like it's the same prompt except I specified smoke stream. Just to show you, you know, you can come up some, with some really cool examples here um, and really make it your own in terms of, you know, this sort of effect. Here's like a uh, soft pastel colors variation of that same prompt. Um, so here's this prompt isolated where I chose which one I wanted, which was uh, the second one. So one, two, three, four. And then I did one with a uh, intricate fire stream with ashes and smoke. All right, so I really liked, um, this is gonna be for our first example. I really like this one right here, although some of these could work as well. So I like the first example. So we're gonna choose this one and you can save this. I'm just gonna use my print screen tool, my screenshot tool, I think it's called light shot. Um, and then we're gonna go into Photoshop. I'm gonna get file new, hit create, paste it in. Okay, so with this, the thing that I wanna adjust here is going to be um, getting rid of the hard edges on the top and the bottom. So you can see, you know, if I zoom up, you can see the smoke that cuts off on the edge. And so that's the first kind of real simple thing that I'm gonna show you how to fix here within Photoshop. So you can see over here in terms of the layers, we have a background layer that is white and then our layer on top. What I wanna do is grab whatever the background is ultimately gonna be up here in the background of my web page, or at least in that section of the web page. Let's say it's a hero section. Hit the I key on my keyboard to get this color right here, which is pretty much black. Like if we look at this, it's pretty much black. And um, then with the background layer selected, I'll hit Shift F5 and we'll make sure foreground color is specified and hit OK. So that means when we toggle this top layer off, it's just gonna be the default background color. Now we could take and select our layer one right here, and I could take the eraser tool, and I can use this, this little um, kind of like a, a, a texture brush right here, and pretty large, like around 800. If you don't have any brushes like these, I, I believe Photoshop does ship with some of them like that. Uh, but you can also just go to Google and type in, you know, free Photoshop texture plugins or textures rather, and you'll or in brushes. You'll find a ton of stuff. So with that selected, then all. Oh, by the way, make sure that you have like your opacity around 50% uh, or so. That way we could start to dab this and make it a nice transition so that the very top at least is all gonna be the same color because we wanna get rid of hard edges. So I'm just clicking around, just trying to make it look natural as possible. And so I'm coming down here at the bottom, kind of doing the same thing. And that's all, I'm gonna leave this up here just like that, that's fine. Um, and you know, there's some other things you can do as well if you really wanna shape and morph this fire stream. Um, for instance, if you think it's a little bit too thick in areas, we can go to liquify with that layer selected. Oh, and before I do that, I'll just merge both of those layers. So I'll select both of them, hit control E, and that merges them into one layer. So now we can go to filter, liquify. 
And now we can use all these tools right here. Um, there's a reconstruct tool, a smooth tool, a twirl. We can twirl this stuff, like watch this. Well, that's not the twirl tool, sorry. sorry. Twirl tool, this is the twirl tool. There we go. So like if we make a real large brush, you know, we can, we can do this crazy sort of stuff. Um, for me, you know, we could probably take the, I think it's called the, the pucker tool. That's, that scales things down, like it just, it shrinks them. So you can make this fire stream like less thick, so to speak. <laughs> so I'm just showing you that as an option. We're not gonna do that. I'm gonna copy this now. So Control A, Control C. And then now the final stop is Figma. So if I go into Figma and I create a new frame, we'll just do like a 1920 by 1080. Um, and then I will paste that in. So with it pasted in, I'm gonna scale it down just a bit temporarily. We're gonna grab the frame itself and get the background color matching up. So now this will fit pretty seamless if I position it, say for example, like this. And then I could also take the artboard, extend it down. Now it looks like it's a little bit darker here. Maybe I chose the wrong color. So let's uh, get that one. There we go. Now it's kind of, nice and seamless and fitting pretty well. I probably could have made some areas darker here, but nonetheless, very cool. So what we can also do to make it even you know, more interesting, we can rotate this and, and flip it and scale it just a bit um, to create you know, perhaps a potentially cool sort of aesthetic. We can go like this, hold Alt, and just flip it like that as well. And I'm just trying to get it to, to maybe a nice spot that makes maybe a little bit of sense. Okay. So now like you might be wondering at this point, oh, then how are we gonna make a UI out of this? Like, like a landing or, or like, a, like a hero section of a page. And it's actually pretty simple. It's not that big of a deal. So I'm gonna get out my reference monitor and um, I'm not gonna sit here copying and or trying to design a whole UI from scratch. So we'll start with the header uh, or the navigation and I'm just gonna paste in a navigation. So notice we have like our brand, we have our nav up here. Everything is easy to see. And of course, responsive considerations would be important to make sure that, you know, at every size, there's not, you know, this stuff, this real high contrast, you know, yellow and orange isn't getting behind this stuff up here. So you can always shift, uh, shift that stuff around. Um, and then we'll get a nice headline, a nice big old beefy headline like this. It's time to ride the fire. I don't advise riding fire. Um, <laughs> so don't ride fire. Okay. Um, and then, you know, we could just do something interesting uh, with the rest of it. Like for instance, um, if you want to have text on top of, you know, bright, you know, stuff like this, you know, you can, there's some things you can do. One of them is that whole glass morphism effect where you use a layer blur. So for instance, like this, doesn't that look good? I think it looks good. It looks very cool. I, I don't know where the other products buttons went. Let me copy those and we'll stick those. Uh, let's see, let's move them around. Where are they at? Ah, there they are. Okay, so yeah, just put these right here. Get this one moved over here, bring it to the front. And look at that. So now we have a landing page that's really supplemented by this, this awesome background. If we take that background away, for instance, it's not all that cool looking. We add this back and it really gives you that nice little wow factor. I will say that make sure with this type of image that you're using, make sure it's not very large, like over 2000 um, pixels in width. And also make sure when you're saving this for, for using it, that you're using an appropriate quality because it would be pretty high, you know, in terms of kilobytes, it might be something like 200, like 300 kilobytes. Ideally you wanna get that at most, in my opinion, for something like this, maybe under like 150. So let's do the other example so I can show you how that works. If I go back to uh, Mid Journey here, let's grab this one. And this one, we're gonna do something a, little, a lot more interesting. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna screenshot it real quick. We're gonna hop into Photoshop. We're gonna go File New, hit Create, paste that sucker in. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna isolate this whole thing from the background. Um, and so to do that, we use this tool right here and it's called the object selection tool. And all I have to do is to select click and select around the whole thing and it will know uh, where to basically select. And it's gonna isolate it from the background itself. It may not be perfect based on whatever type of image you're working with. 
Um, but that's pretty good right there. And so what I can do now at this point is maybe determine a, an overall background color because notice the, the mid journey created kind of a gradient in the background. It's darker over here and it's, it's not. So I want to, that's why I want to isolate it. And so to do that, I, we just hide this layer and then paste that. Now it looks kind of bad here, but it's really just a matter of getting the right background color for it. So I'll take the um, paint bucket tool right there. And I'm gonna grab a color from here, just, you know, maybe like a, a darker blue. And then I'm going to go to the background layer and then just basically uh, use the paint bucket tool just to paste that in or, or it's actually pretty dark right there. Maybe we'll grab a, a lighter. There we go. So something like that. And that's just gonna demonstrate how you can really play around with the background of this element. Now, before we start to modify this even more, um, let's take the layer two, which is just this one isolated, this whole crazy paint thing. And we'll go to the same area, filter, liquefy. And I wanna do the same thing um, with the pucker tool with a real large you know, size brush. I'm at 2,234 for the brush size, so it's really large. And I'm just gonna click it. And I'm gonna click it until it really shrinks it down. And then I'm gonna I take it the size down just a bit to 1,400 and really try to get this middle area. Now you can see if you move it, it really has a, a more exaggerated effect. Now you don't wanna distort it too much uh, to the point at which you see pixelation and stuff like that and weird artifacts. But I think right there, I'm happy with that. Um, we can take the move tool real quick and we can move this thing around as well. Like we could push it down. Maybe there's gonna be some text up there. So you can really shape this stuff. Now look at that. That's, that's pretty cool compared to what we had originally, which is this versus this. Okay, so this just gives us more room to work with. Um, so now what I'll do is just hit Control A with layer two selected and then hit Control C, Control N for a new document, hit create, paste it in. We're gonna hide the background and then we're gonna go to image size. Sorry, I'm moving pretty fast here. You'll just have to pause. And we're gonna do something more like uh, 1600 pixels for this. So this is the full size. And if I save this, I'm just gonna use the old school pros, Control Shift Alt S gets saved for web. We could do a PNG 24, make sure transparency is selected. And we'll s now notice how large this is, 930 kilobytes, it's way too large. Fortunately, something exists called tiny PNG. So we're gonna save this on the desktop. We'll just call this paint stuff. <laughs> That's my naming abilities there, not very good. And then what we'll do is I uh, get out uh, a browser. I'm gonna type tinypng.com and we wanna drag from our desktop that image um, that we just saved. So let me get out my desktop real quickly, hang with me, we'll sort this by date, there it is. And I'm gonna drag this over here and then it's going to adjust this. So now it's 200 KB, it's a lot more manageable. So you download it and then we'll view that in a folder. We'll go back to Figma. Where's Figma, there. there. And this time, let's do another one. Here's our second one. I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff inside. So I believe we have a locked layer. Or wait, no we don't. Yeah, there we go. So let's get, all, let's get rid of most of this stuff. We'll leave the brand stuff up top. And then I will drag over that image. Look at that, already looks good. Okay. So now, See, even black works with this. It's really cool. Um, but I'm gonna change the background just real quickly. We'll just grab this, uh, like a blue or something like that. Now what's cool is because since this is a transparent background, I'm gonna hit the rectangle tool kind of right, right under, underneath it. Make sure that this is actually inside of that frame. There we go. Move this down, put this like right here. Hit the left bracket, which we'll put underneath. And for this one, maybe we'll make it a little bit lighter. Uh, let's use this color and then make the background color a little bit darker. So now we can create kind of a more dynamic appearance um, for this demo. So let's pull that down. So this is already coming together. 
So now what we could do is, uh, once again, I'm not gonna design anything from scratch here. Um, we can get a nice set, solid like headline. And what's cool is we could just put this underneath that paint stuff layer and guess what? We have like some paint flying on top of it. And you could do something really cool like once you get this into the actual web where you're doing you know, a reveal animation or something like that. Um, I'm gonna paste just a couple more things in just to show you how cool this is. Uh, we can give this background here maybe a little bit of texture. So I'm gonna put in, uh, let's see here. Yeah, right underneath. Let me change this selection colors. There we go. So now we're making it real dynamic and interesting looking with that little background pattern. Um, and yes, all this is very achievable, achievable with an HTML CSS. Nothing really crazy is happening here. Um, and then finally, maybe we'll have like a feature section underneath it. And there you go. Like this is totally awesome. Um, it's not too huge in terms of file size, especially for you know the wow factor that you have with such a, a cool image right here. Um, and then here's our other example. So let me change this background color here. Maybe like a darker blue. There we go. And there we go. So that's just a couple ways that you can utilize Photoshop which with just a little bit of Photoshop skills with Midjourney in order to create some really cool visuals for your UI designs. All right, everybody, as always, make sure to subscribe and I will see you soon. Goodbye.